After my last update, I received a chat message on Reddit by someone claiming that they knew me. At first, I thought they were trolling, until this person used my real name. Initially, I panicked. Wouldn't anyone? I thought that I'd been vague enough about our location and our identities that would be near impossible to narrow it down to us. However, it has occurred to me that someone that knows Rami in real life could easily identify that my posts were about him just based on how much he tends to stand out. That meant that these messages were from someone who has seen us both in person. Apprehensively, I messaged back. Why are you telling me this? What do you want? The response was, I'm scared for you. You're forgetting who and what Rami is. As I was typing my response, I received another message. He will turn on you if he finds the series. I asked this Redditor who they were. The only response was that they were someone who was experienced with Jin. They offered to prove it to me. Please don't. Not with Rami, with the animal tech. Don't think I'm ready for him yet, lol. Seriously, don't. Please just stay out of it. Trust me, you don't want to be involved in any of this. I can help. I have enough problems in my life. I don't need this. I didn't receive an answer. Shit. Afterwards, I clicked on their account, finding that they had absolutely nothing on it. Must be a burner. Despite what happened between us, I am still terrified of Rami finding this series. Somehow, I've endeared him to me, but I'm sure that could change quickly if he discovered that I'd revealed so much about him, regardless of the efforts to conceal his identity. Clearly, I hadn't done enough. To summarize my emotional state, I was not party rocking in the house tonight. I know the tenses are a mess in that sentence, but let me have my stupid joke. On a more positive note, my hand has been getting better. I've been mostly keeping it covered since the skin is highly sensitive. It's currently in the gross phase of the healing process. Splotches of bright red with patches of dead, yellowing skin peeling off. Sexy, right? While I was at work, I couldn't help myself from scrutinizing the other employees that passed through the halls, becoming more and more paranoid each time someone would as much as glance in my general direction. Hold on, could it have been Anya? Sure, she'd swore not to lay a hand on me, but she never mentioned anything about cyberspace. I definitely couldn't rule her out, but something just wasn't adding up. I needed more information. All that I knew about my number one Reddit fan was that they were gunning for the hoof gin. My thought process was that if I could find the djinn, then I could potentially find this Redditor as well. Maybe keep them from interfering my affairs. I got ahead of my duties so that I'd have enough time to visit the animal facility before break, then headed straight to post-mortem, all the while reminding myself that I had protection. Nothing could touch me. When I arrived, I couldn't decide if I was relieved or disappointed when I saw that the fridge door was properly closed, devoid of the crunching of bones or the clopping of hooves. To be safe, I did a quick lap around the facility to see if I could find my hoof bestie, but there were no signs of it. I thought back to when I had first encountered the hoof gin. What time of night had that been? It was roughly an hour before my shift was over. As disturbing as it was to think about, maybe the hoof gin simply wasn't hungry yet. I resolved to check back later and return to the lab. At midnight, Rami was in the break room before me, comfortably slumped down in one of the chairs sipping from his thermos. I could feel his judgmental stare through his sunglasses as he watched me prepare Chef Boyardee like a grown-up. Have you ever eaten a vegetable before? That's rich coming from the guy who's on the frat boy coffee and alcohol diet. Don't you think you might have a drinking problem? Nope. Clearly, I'm very good at it. As I went to pass him, he caught one of my belt loops with a finger, pulling me towards him. I gave him what he wanted, leaning in to kiss him. I felt my phone buzz in my pocket. We weren't done, and I absolutely was not about to cut it short. Once the microwave beeped, Rami released me, telling me to go eat my trash. My phone vibrated again. I pulled it out to see a Reddit notification. Silently, I prayed that it wasn't what I thought it was. As per usual, my prayers went unanswered. The goal shouldn't be a problem after tonight. Oh, no. I quickly made up an excuse about an emergency in the animal facility, then promised to be right back. I flew down the stairs hoping that the Redditor hadn't committed to whatever thrilling heroics they were planning. I didn't know what I was going to do once I got there, I just wanted to make sure that some chronically online dumbass wasn't going to get themselves killed. 
When I reached postmortem, I found that the fridge door was open again, revealing the hoof gin as it slurped up a mouse's tail like one would a spaghetti noodle. My stomach fluttered, threatening to eject the chef Boyardee. Despite them both being gin, the differences between the hoof creature and Rami seemed to be as distinct as the dissimilarities between Chihuahuas and Rottweilers. I'd seen Rami get blown away by shotgun shells only to appear unscathed mere hours later. Meanwhile, my encounter with the hoof gin had been a week ago, yet its chemical burns had only turned leathery as opposed to disappearing completely. It was healing faster than me, but not by much. The hoof gin scowled at me, its rough, reddened skin making the creature resemble angry beef jerky. Its childlike voice would have been unnerving on its own, but became far more disconcerting when the words were punctuated with blood in its teeth. You again. Now that I'd found it, truthfully, I wasn't entirely sure what to do. As stupid as it sounds, I hadn't thought that far ahead. I started stammering, and I honestly can't remember whatever dumb thing I was trying to say. Without warning, it lunged for me. My hands reacted before my mind could, shielding my face as the hoofjin's fingers grasped for me. The hoofjin swore over the sound of its skin being singed, retreating away from me. Shaking, I slowly lowered my arms, watching as the creature glowered at me from the other side of the room, its face shifting from being humanoid to cat-like, the transitions between each facade reminding me of wet cement taking form. I backed away from it. Wish or not, the hoof gin had a way of making my skin crawl. How did you, of all people, get an Ifrit's favor? The hoof gin snarled, its voice deepening with each word that it spoke. It took a second to get my breathing under control, but eventually, I found my voice. I need to... I need to ask you something. Its eyes narrowed in disbelief. What? Have you, um... Um... Noticed anyone following you? Yes, you, it snapped. It growled, snatched a pair of scissors, and hurled them at me. I managed to duck away, heart racing as the blade slammed into the wall mere inches away from where my head had just been. As the hoofjin reached for a scalpel, I took cover in the refrigerator. The wish protects against anything that has intent to harm me, though I'm not certain if sharp, inanimate projectiles fall under that category. They don't have intent, they're just weapons. Knowing Rami, I'm sure he accounted for that, but I wasn't about to find that out the hard way. My hiding place was not ideal as a metallic odor of gore invaded my nostrils. If you weren't aware, exposed brains have their own smell, like warm mucus. Now you know. Enjoy. Suffer as I have. Suddenly it got quiet. The hoof gin had stopped its tirade. What? I didn't dare risk peeking out. Against my will, the image of a scalpel soaring into my eye played out in my head like a macabre slideshow, reinforcing my cowardice. The hoof gen crawled towards the postmortem's room's door, its spindly limbs a whirl in the creature's haste. I felt myself crouching lower, anticipation making my breath quicken, dreading what could be on the other side. The door creaked open. A round object slid across the ground, causing the hoof gen to leap away with an aggravated hiss. A talisman? The person who'd thrown it was donned in full lab PPE that is normally only required when handling infectious biological material. Thick protective goggles, an N95 respirator, a hair covering, latex gloves, and a lab coat. The hoof gin cursed at its assailant, but it sounded like nothing more than bravado as the creature cowered away from the talisman. PPE person's voice was muffled by the respirator, but it sounded like a man's voice. I couldn't understand what he was saying, but it sounded like he was speaking in Arabic. The hoof gin seized the nearest object, which was a dirty, empty rodent cage, and tossed it. The PPE person ducked, but was now showered with rat droppings and soiled bedding. The whole time, he didn't stop his mutterings. The hoof gin cringed away as the PPE person retrieved the talisman and advanced on it, holding a medallion in the creature's feline face. The gin's high-pitched shriek could have made glass shatter, making my ears ring. Its body began to convulse as it dissolved into black, turbulent smoke, swirling towards the talisman, its skin peeling away to expose the muscle beneath. Ribbons of smoke disappeared until the hoofjing was reduced to a grimacing, simmering pile of bones. Not long after, even those crumbled into ashes. The PPE person turned. I ducked further into the refrigerator. I heard a muffled, Lab rat? I shut my eyes and sighed, more foul air entering my lungs. God damn it. Reluctantly, I rose out of my hiding spot. The PPE person shouted through his mask. You may not understand what I'm doing now, but I promise that it's for the good of everyone, including you. So please, let me leave first. Mouth dry, I swallowed before replying. Why should I? You know what it'll do to me if he finds me before I'm ready. 
Ready for what? I can't tell you that. Not right now. Please, from one human to another. All you have to do is let me get a head start. You can tell him that you saw me if you want, if you believe that'll make you safer. Just let me have some time to get some distance. Thanks to the talisman, I was shocked when I heard Rami's voice in the doorway. Why don't you just ask me? Oh God, how much did he hear? This playful grin gave nothing away as he shut the door behind him, standing between us and the only exit. The PPE person stiffened, clutching his talisman harder. His voice was surprisingly even as he addressed Rami. I only came here for the goal. Please, allow me to leave. Rami ignored him, glancing at me. You all right, lab rat? I nodded quickly, heart hammering as I tried to figure out what he could be thinking. Rami let out a small laugh, making no move to step away from the door. You know, I've heard so many stories about magicians in ancient times. There aren't many in the modern age, at least none that are worth noticing. I gotta say, this is pretty exciting. I'm not a sorcerer, the PPE person insisted. I simply wanted to be rid of this creature. It kept eating my specimens. Rami snorted, his voice still deceptively friendly. Oh, don't sell yourself short. Enslaving a djinn of any kind is a big accomplishment. You should feel proud of yourself. There was a sharp edge to Rami's tone when he said the word enslaving. The PPE person replied, I'm not proud. Now please, I don't want to fight you. Unexpectedly, Rami shrugged. Fine. He strode over to my side, his smirk mischievous. The PPE person stepped forward cautiously, gaze fixed on Rami. The medallion swung in his fist as he neared the door. I'll see you later, all right? Rami spoke as if saying goodbye to an old friend. The PPE person stopped abruptly as he reached the doorway. His muffled voice had a slight tremor as he spoke. You'll follow me. Try to figure out who I am. You'll torture me as you did the brothers. That made Rami's ears perk up. How do you know about the brothers? Not good. The PPE guy suddenly began shouting in Arabic. The lights flickered. I glanced around, trying desperately to figure out what was going on. That's when Rami dropped. I caught him under the arms before he hit the ground, tears in my eyes as I screamed his name. Black liquid streamed from his nostrils, tear ducts, nail beds, the corner of his mouth. The same substance that had come out of me when my voice was returned. The tar-like substance began to pull under him flowing away from me as if averse to my presence. As the substance accumulated, it began to solidify, taking shape. I watched in a mixture of awe and horror as the mass grew taller. Bat-like wings unfurled from the viscous liquid, followed by a scorpion's tail. Sinewy arms took shape next, the hand tipped with nasty-looking claws, which curled into fists. Animalistic, shining eyes glared down at me and the body I was holding, the face becoming more caprine as curled horns arose from the tar. The first thing that this fearsome, sublime being said to me was, Well, shit. Rami in all of his glory, everybody. The PPE guy started to run. Rami's head snapped in the direction of the movement, then a blur. The scorpion tail shattered the wall, causing the PPE guy to flail off to the side and for me to flinch away. There's no way that nobody else heard that. I gently set the body down I was holding, knowing that he was already dead, but still afraid of hurting him. I stood up slowly on trembling legs, not sure what to do with myself, or if I should even do anything. In a blink, Rami was gone, reappearing in front of the PPE guy, tail lashing out again. I saw what he was doing before the PPE guy did. He was hurting him, cutting him off to drive him back to post-mortem. As he doubled back, the PPE guy body checked me, setting me sprawling painfully onto the ground as he cried out as his shoulder began to smoke. He bent towards the body Rami had been inhabiting, fumbling with a talisman. No! Clumsily trying to get my limbs to work, I reached for him, not being able to get there in time as the PPE guy placed the talisman on the dead man's chest. Rami blocked the doorway, eyes blazing as he saw the talisman barring him from his host. What made me pale is that I noticed that Rami quaked slightly. I recalled then that Matthew had been weakened after Rami forced his specter out of me. Rami was hiding it, but the exorcism had taken a toll on him. My thoughts began to spiral as I wondered what would happen to him if he got too weak. Would he die? You need this body back, don't you? PPE guy shouted. The Jin's glowing eyes narrowed. He faltered slightly, shaking his head as if trying to stay awake. I couldn't let whatever was happening to him get worse. 
I just couldn't. After a hard swallow, I told Romy, Use me. He dug a hand into a wall to steady himself. The PPE guy protested, but I ignored him, shuddering as I recalled what it was like to be in the backseat of my own mind as I continued. You're not Matthew. I trust you. I have to admit, I told a small lie then. The idea of being puppeteered again, even if it was by someone I trusted, made me want to scream. I think that's why Rami hesitated. He knew it. He knew how much offering him this shook me to my core. The gins had lowered, his brow furrowed, and jaw clenched. Those fiery, pale eyes eventually met mine. I steeled myself for the worst, hoping that I wasn't making a horrible mistake as I nodded in what I hoped was a reassuring gesture. Close your eyes, he whispered. The last thing I heard before I felt fire in my veins was a PPE guy's muffled, Wait! The same burning that had distorted my vocal cords last month flowed throughout my vasculature, making my limbs tremble of their own will. I opened my mouth to sob or cry out, I'm not sure which. However, by that point, I was in the back seat. Any screams I wanted to unleash would go unheard. Did it hurt like this for him? Did he even notice? Among my own anguish, I could sense something else. Rami. His ferocity, his pride, his power. All of that which made him him overwhelmed me. Distantly, it occurred to me that it would be easy for me to lose myself. The inferno within kept me there. My eyes opened, revealing the PPE guy still standing over Rami's host. The room was brighter now, almost too bright. The blaze within my limbs continued to rage as Rami used my mouth to grin at the distraught, masked man across the room. You want to be a hero, magician? When Rami spoke with my voice, it sounded far too confident and deep to have possibly been mine, his accent the biggest giveaway that I wasn't the one in control anymore. He stood slowly, his movements calculated, watching for any slip-ups from the PPE guy, any signs of weakness for him to exploit. Thinking of another human being as prey, it wasn't a good feeling. Rami used my voice to goad the PPE guy. Be a hero, right now. Save Labrat. That's what you really want, isn't it? To feel like you're something special? I want your word, the PPE guy yelled, sounding terrified. I want your word that you'll let me live if I do this. He wasn't specific enough. There was a lot that Rami could do to him without killing him. Please don't. Don't use me to hurt someone else. But I can't control him. He'd already made up his mind. Of course, my lip said with an earnest smile. Just remove that talisman and we'll call tonight a stalemate. Sound good? The PPE guy cautiously, nervously picked the talisman off of the dead man's torso. Rami observed every moment, looking for some opening where he could get the talisman out of this man's hand. He intended to leave the PPE man a vegetable, trapped in his own body, unable to move or communicate. Rami, please don't make me do this. Wait, that was guilt. Rami felt guilty. After that brief moment of humanity, he stopped looking for opportunities. He let the PPE man leave this time, scanning him, committing every detail about his target to memory from his height to the way that he moved. He wasn't done with him. He would find this man later. Once the PPE man had left our sight, he approached his host, kneeling across the dead man's waist to lean in as if to kiss the cadaver. The black substance poured from my throat into the dead man's, the fires under my skin beginning to dull to a mere ache as Rami's essence poured out of me. I shuddered, feeling tears come from my eyes in a reflex. I tested my fingers, feeling that my hands were mine again as I weakly pitched forward. Rami's arms clumsily embraced me as I collapsed on top of him. I think he was trying to catch me, but he wasn't faring much better than I was. He was barely moving. I remember reading once that humans possessed by jinn often lose their minds. While I think I'll recover in time, at least I hope I will. It's easy to see why that would be the case. Being in the back seat of your own consciousness is only one component of it, though that is maddening enough on its own. Rather, it was the contrast between his spirit and mine was what was getting to me. He was a being of fire in every sense of the word, ready to consume all in his path and more than capable of doing so. I'd felt his power. It had radiated throughout both of us, devouring me from the inside out. And then, I was just me again. Hollow. Slowly, I rose off of him. Well, 
Okay, I tried to. I fell off to the side, not having the strength to stand. There were footsteps outside the door. The other vet techs had heard the commotion and seen the destruction. With great effort, Rami got himself to sit up. I was surprised to see that for the first time, he truly looked dead. Dark shadows lined his eyes. The luster was gone from his dark hair. His brown skin had a ghoulish, gray hue to it. He closed his eyes to hide their shine from the approaching vet tech. Alarmed, they all demanded to know a million things at once. What happened? Are we okay? Was it terrorists? I thought of a lie before Rami did. Structural collapse. I don't know if they believed me, but what other explanation could there have been? The building was getting old and there had been water damage to one of the offices, so it wasn't too far-fetched. I wouldn't let them call an ambulance for us, citing that I couldn't afford it since I hadn't paid off my deductible yet. One of them insisted on driving us both, seeing how dead Rami looked. I have anemia, Rami explained. It looks worse than it is. It took a lot of storytelling and arguing, but eventually we got them to let us leave on the condition that we had to promise to go to the ER afterwards. We didn't. Since we were both exhausted, we agreed that it would be best to get some sleep and discuss everything in the morning. I'll let you all know how that goes. <laughs>